Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Now we've got a real treat for you guys today. Today, we are gonna attempt to pair our Macrotheli Gigas, the giant Japanese funnel web spider. Now, there is pretty much zero information about these guys within the hobby. There is nothing at all. So we are really in the dark with this one. And um, as far as I'm aware, they've never been bred in this country. I think there has been a couple of cases in Germany, um, but that is about as, as far as I can find out. They're very, very few and far between. And like I say, there is no real documented evidence as to how we should go about this or what we should expect or anything else. So, as you are probably aware, the, uh, the funnel webs are a spider that really, really demands your utmost respect. These are not to be trifled with. You must be very, very careful with them. They're incredibly fast. And I'm not fond of saying spiders are aggressive because I don't really believe that they are actually aggressive in a, in a nasty sense of the word. But these guys are very much um, into looking after themselves. They will not hesitate to strike out and strike out in a forceful manner. So we need to be very, very careful. Now we've got our female in here and she molted out a couple of months ago. So she should in theory be ready. And we have been absolutely so, so lucky that one of my others has actually matured into a male. Now, anyone within the hobby that's interested in these particular spiders will understand and know that males are, they're like unicorns. You just can't find them. And I don't know why, but there is a severe lack of males. So when this guy actually matured out and I realized it was a male, I was ecstatic over the moon because it meant that we could move forward with our, with our breeding project. So what we're gonna do now, the male is in here, and as you see, we keep our males, you'll know from previous videos, we keep our males in these little 20 by 20 cubes, perfectly adequate, makes him save his energy, keeps him nice and safe and sound. And our female is in this temporary enclosure. I've been very keen to actually move her over, but we're gonna try and pair her first. But as you can see, they do some incredible webbing. So what we're gonna do now is we, are going to attempt to get him out of here. Now these are very, very fast, very fast. And um, I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do this. So this is all going to be a little bit new and fresh because underneath here, there is a piece of bark You'll see there's an escape hole here. There's another hole here. And there's one up here as well. Um, so you can see he's, he's got a number of entrances that he can fly in and out of. And the only way we're gonna be able to get him out is to destroy his home. I don't know if you can see through there, but he is actually right in the front of his web here. I don't think he's going to be tempted to come out, but you can just about see a foot down there. He's actually disappeared. So where has he gone? Now then, right, okay. Let's just see if we can't get into... We need to be able to get our box in. So what I'm going to do, I am going to seal off this hole here using his own web because I don't want him tearing out of this hole. So we're going to seal that one off. Um, and I think what we're going to do is we are going to close this one here as well. And what we're aiming for here is just a little bit of personal safety. So we can do that there. 
Now don't worry about my fingers, I'm very aware of what I'm doing. Now then, as we peel this back, we're peeling this moss back. And as you can see under there, it's all webbed up underneath. And he, there he is, you can see him there. Just see his toes. Can you see that? He's actually gone back down again. There he is. He is just there. He's there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this bark back. There you go, we can see him now. There's a foot. You can just see a leg there. Now as you can see, there's lots of bits and pieces for him to hide in here, which makes this very difficult. As long as he's in the comfort of that bit of webbing, we should be fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remo remove this, if I can. There we go. taken the whole thing out and what I'm going to do now is we're going to place our catch cup here the bottom of the hole here is you as you can see here here he comes you'll see now where they get this aggression from he is a very full-on little spider be very careful of our fingers now I think what I'm going to try and do is use the lid to manoeuvre him. Very quick, so we, can, oh, we have to be very careful. And there we go, we have him. All right. One successful catch. What we'll do now is we'll put all his stuff back. He will rearrange that, sure enough. Notice that, guys, we're being very optimistic and hopeful that he actually does go back home. <laughs> so, what we'll do now we can see him there. See what an impressive spider he is. Now I don't know if you can see on the see his pedipalps there. You can maybe see the emboli on them. You notice they have um, a lack of tibial hooks. So he's got no, no tibial hooks on his legs. So we're not sure now whether he is gonna pair like a true spider, although these aren't true spiders, or will he pair more like in the fashion of the tarantulas? This is gonna be an interesting thing. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn the female's tank around. We've managed not to disturb her and she has been on the desk here for the last 24 hours because I didn't want any real disturbance around her. So I'll take that off of there. And we are gonna... Camera loaded would love to come round here. Now then, to see in here, we see with this female here, she has got tunnels here, another one here, there's one here. This is the one she uses the most. So when I pop food in here, she will come from back here, come through and out of this hole. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop our mail up here. And hopefully, <coughs> excuse me, 
Excuse me. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. And hopefully she will feel his vibrations. She fed last night, as did he. So what we're going to hope now is that he doesn't come absolutely charging out. So we've got to do this very, very carefully. So here we go. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put him on the top here. Notice he's lost his aggression. And we'll see if we can't just get him to walk out. I don't want him to have a fit. I'm going to move him very, very slowly. There we go. Don't run, little guy. Nice and gently does it. Now that didn't work out too bad. I would have rather he'd stayed on top of the web. But beggars can't be choosers. Now she is back here. So there's a good chance she might just go along the side of the tank. They might just pick each other up. So as you can see, this has taken roughly about 20 minutes since this male that you can see now was first put into the enclosure. And he's woken up now. And he looks quite determined. He's definitely on the hunt. Now we really don't know what to expect now. As I said before, there is no information on the breeding of these guys. Here we go. He's now found her main tunnel entrance. There she there. You just saw her legs flash on the left hand side of him. Now as you can see the, the actual footage is very, very poor. And this is mainly due to the amount of webbing on the glass. It was so difficult to actually get a clear view of anything. But what we have tried to do is try and document as much as we can. And as you can just about make out through there, that she is doing some very, very subtle movements. Now they are face to face now. And the female is on the left. Now you see this, that very subtle leg shaking. Note the size of the fangs on the female there. This is one of the things that makes these guys so dangerous. And the male now, as you can see, he's coming out now. He's come back up through a side entrance. You can see his bulbous pedipalps there. Very, very evident there. And as you can see, she is actually soliciting him. He's not showing any fear from her at the moment. Now this is the male on the left hand side now. And the female is underneath the tunnel. And you can see she's like giving these very gentle flinches. Very subtle. He's doing the same. Now you see there was a slight uh, interaction there from the male. He obviously wasn't particularly happy about her forwardness. Now they stayed in this position like this for, for roughly about an hour. A little bit of backwards and forwards. And again with this very, very gentle, um, sort of almost like a throbbing motion. The 
can see there again the male is just putting her in her place just keeping her in check she is actually laying on her side which was very unusual she's almost upside down she's laying on the side wall of the web in the tunnel now, as we often see with other spiders especially some of your fossorial spiders the males are very very tentative because they normally end up having to do the deed in a quite a tight in you know a tight environment which doesn't allow them too much scope for escape and this was one of the things that we were really worried about these males are so hard to get a hold of I mean they really just do not become available and we don't really understand why it may be the fact that the vast majority of uh, the funnel webs that come into the hobby are wild caught and it may just be that you know it's the females at the time of year that the the collectors are going out and collecting these spiders it might just be that the females are the ones that are evident at that time of year and I'm starting to think that maybe on the very few sacks that have been dropped by wild caught females that have actually hatched I think maybe that the um, they've been incubated at a higher temperature and this is producing females and this may explain why there, there's no males within the hobby now you'll notice there with the male if you look can just about see his abdomen he sways his abdomen he shakes it from side to side now this is something that we often see with our true spiders the wolf spiders and things like that very very interesting behavior these guys have got traits from the true spiders and they also have traits from the tarantulas as you can see now he's quite determined he's on the move he really did get around very very active notice the huge spinnerets on these they have massive spinnerets compared to the tarantulas now you can just see her on the left hand side again there you can see her legs she's picked him up again she's moving she's now coming out towards the entrance this is her favorite entrance her favorite burrow he is facing her now You notice we're not getting the shaking that we often see with our male tarantulas, they often shake. We're not getting none of that with these guys. So many differences, this is absolutely thrilling stuff to watch. looks here like he's trying to actually tempt her out he doesn't feel so confident down there and here she comes now what we've seen so far is that the, um, this female appears to be quite receptive you know she does these very sort of short sharp juddery movements I don't think we're seeing the full courtship at the moment. Here she comes. Now he's not actually, although he's 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 showing signs of. Um, let's say a difference <laughs> he's, uh, he's not fully committed to this uh, breeding program 
Although I think she she actually appears to be in fairly good condition. She seems to be quite up for an interaction. And you can see there, he's gone all the way around the back, and he's coming up the back, and if you look just above the moss, you can see that, um, you just see his leg. There he is, there he is, here he comes. He's coming through the back door. Let's see what this produces. And she's gone back in. Notice there, you have to excuse the reflection of my hands. This was such a difficult thing to try and film. But you notice there that there's very subtle throbbing of her abdomen. Now this was continuous the whole time. The whole time that she was within interaction with the male, she done this throbbing motion. Again, these are all subtle little signs that we need to be looking for. These are all telling a story. They're all give us, giving us an indication of how things are and what in what direction they're going and this gives us the um, the confidence that we can leave them together and allow them to uh, try and try and breed and as you can see now the male has come back he's come out and he faces her and then he literally just turns his back on her and walks away which in some respects shows a confidence with the male he doesn't feel threatened by her. She's got them very subtle movements. She's trying to entice him all the time. Notice now he's webbing up. This is something that we've seen throughout the whole process. That as he walks around he is constantly laying web down. Now is this because this is like a lifeline? So in the case of him actually having to take off in a hurry, he can follow these webs? Almost like he's leaving a bread trail. He's giving her a little bit of a run around because she's not quite sure where to go. But one of the things that's been uh, very, very evident with this attempt is that all the information that we could find and um, people that we spoke to said that they have a very aggressive um, stance uh, regarding the breeding process. And we've seen the opposite here. We've seen our very, very subtle, very gentle you notice now they're almost in a tarantula pose now and at this point I actually thought we were going to get a successful insemination they are both raised up and it was looking rather rather hopeful here and who knows we might have even got an insemination here but we just couldn't see it there you see that little stab was that him telling her enough is enough? Don't be so pushy. Or did he actually manage to inseminate her? Because on some of the spiders, as we've seen in the past, sometimes a very quick jab is all it takes. A split second. And it's over and done with. The only thing that suggests that maybe he was just putting her in her place is the fact that they're still there. I would have thought if he'd actually inseminated, he would have took off. I have to excuse that drilling in the background, my neighbour. Oh, we seem to have come to a little bit of a stammer. You see, she's um, she's soliciting again. Amazing how high up she is, you can see her fangs there. And he is way down low. Is there something going on behind that web? Oh, if only we knew. This is an absolute jigsaw of a, of a puzzle 
to try and unravel. But what an opportunity. As we said in the beginning, the males are incredibly difficult to find. And we don't really know why. Now what we've seen here in um, in this in this short video, we've tried to put the clips together that are actually showing the interactions. As you can see here now, this is the female here, and she is re-webbing up the tunnel. And this is something we saw a lot of. As the male wandered off, she would then, in process, get on with the housekeeping, and she would start webbing up. Notice those huge spinnerets. You'll also see there that the web she's laying down is very, very thick. It's like a blanket of web. She's almost sealing off the tunnel. And she'd done this all the time, whereas the male laid a fine web, almost like a lifeline. You can see there a large sheet of webbing that she's, uh, she's spreading over the tunnel. Fantastic webbers, these guys. Absolutely fantastic. And I think today we've seen a, a totally different side. These are a fascinating spider. And as we've seen, not as aggressive and terrible as one would first imagine. They are made out to be the stuff of nightmares. But I think we've shown a very different and subtle side to these guys. Here she comes. Back into the favourite part of her lair. Yeah. Right then. So we've had a bit of interaction, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to move him out. And because um, I don't want to leave them cohabiting at this moment. He doesn't seem quite ready, although she is. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try and try and get him out. There we go. It's as easy as that. I'm going to put the lid back on her. Do now is we're going to put him back in his original enclosure and I think what we'll try and do is cool him off a little so here we go this is where he might just run out and I shot him from above Again, once again, nice and gently, we'll try and get him to move. We don't want to fluster him. It's nice and gentle. You notice we're not getting any aggression. Nice and slow. Bearing in mind, in this small enclosure, if he was to run up the back, he'd be straight out. So we have to keep things very slow and gentle. Cracking spider, isn't he? Oh, I'll get the lid back on. Vibration is a massive thing with these guys. Don't want too much. And he's back in. And it was all nice and simple, wasn't it? So that was good. So as we said in the beginning, these guys do demand your utmost respect. They have got by all intents and purposes, a very, very strong venom. And this is not something you want to get bitten by. But as we've shown there, although they are capable of delivering a very nasty bite, if handled correctly and nice and gently, as we've shown here, 
we didn't actually see too much aggression from these guys, considering what a terrible reputation these have. And yet we managed to take him out of there. We saw a little bit of aggression while he was inside his, inside his web, but we still managed to get him out without him having an absolute fit. So he, he left his own enclosure into the cricket tub, into her enclosure. You notice how he moved out nice and gently into her enclosure and he stayed calm the whole time. Now, um, out of the footage that we've got there, it's very, very shaky footage and it's very difficult to actually try and film this, this breeding attempt because the glass is covered in web and everything else. So it's hard to focus on different things. But I think we saw a little bit of interesting stuff there. She was obviously reasonably, well, she seemed pretty receptive to be fair, and he's a little bit jumpy. So I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna cool him off for a week, and then we'll try these again next weekend, and we'll see where we go there. But I think we've, uh, I think we've managed to show a different side to these funnel webs today. And um, yeah, fingers crossed, there is no information on these, so fingers crossed we're, we're gonna um, persevere and we'll see where it leads us. This could all be a whole brand new thing. Right, well I hope you enjoyed that and do keep an eye out for the future video because we will be doing these again next week. Um, we will try and pair them again next week. So uh, until then, don't forget, be calm, be gentle and love your spider. And we'll see you again soon guys.